The Jays came back after the, the West Coast swing in Seattle after losing all four. I'm weighing a rain garbage can on my head a couple of those days. But then I said, you know what? The one thing I have not tried is putting the hat on from opening day. Or we got the freebie at opening day. And I'm like, let me try it and see what works. Oh, the Jays win. 4-3 over the Philadelphia Phillies at Rogers Center tonight. Now 46-42 and 42 on the season. But more importantly, they end the losing streak. They get back into the win column. They get a great start from Jose Barrios. They get some timely hits, even though they could have gotten more. And they win a ball game. I mean, that's the most important part here, right? You had some good bullpen stuff from your key guys in Meza, Garcia, and Romano. Barrios gives you a great start. You have, you, your offense was good. You had three RBI doubles. And you win 4-3 over the Phils. Let's break it down. First inning. You have two on and nobody out. Bo and Springer get on. And we're like, man. And obviously, I think they were, they were, they were in a bullpen day. I don't know if... Um, you know, they obviously don't have a few players. I think Alec Bohm, JT, Real Muto. I think uh, Aaron Nola as well. And people are going to be like, oh, there's such a stupid rule. You realize that it's the same rule applies for the Blue Jays crossing the border to the United States. And, uh, you know, that would be a real problem, obviously. But it would be a Kyrie Irving situation. You can't play on, you know, away from home, but you can play at home kind of thing. And you also remember Robbie Ray last year, right? He's a free agent. Everyone's like, you got to bring him back. You got to bring him back. We find out he's not vaxxed. So, well, we can't sign him. So that's a problem as well. So I don't buy this nonsense. You're not getting poked? So be it. Don't play. And the Jays go out there and they make them pay for it. Bottom of the first name with two on and nobody out. I, the next two guys, Vladdy and Kirk, get out. And I'm like, okay, is this how it's going to be today? But then Teoscar Hernandez rips the ball to the right center field gap all the way to the wall. Bo scores. Springer scores. Teo tries for third, gets thrown out at third. But both runs cross. And the Jays lead it 2 nothing after one inning. It is beautiful to see. Barrios gives you a clean first, showing that he's got some stuff today. He had the guts today to get it done. Top, uh, top of the seventh inning, Odubel Herrera. Look. This is what the, what's been plaguing the Blue Jays lately, though. These little snot shot things, like Odubel Herrera slapping it the other way down the third baseline to Chopper, right? And you know you're not going to get Odubel Herrera with his speed. So it's an infield single. Scott scores, and it's a 2 1 ball game. You know, we keep moving ahead. It was the top of the, uh, I believe it was the top of the third inning. Scott's a solo home run, and we are tied at two. Not where you want to be. Or sorry, that was the top of the second. So top of the third inning, excuse me, the, the, the Scott home run happened. I wrote top of the seventh. I don't know how the hell that, uh, that works. But anyways, bottom of the fourth inning, with Guriel on base, and man, this guy didn't get out today. Matt Chapman, it's a carbon copy of Tasker and Anderson hitting the first inning, rips one to the right center field gap, fastball down the middle, does what he's supposed to do with it and drill it the other way, and it goes all the way to the gap. Teo score, or sorry, Guriel scores, and the Blue Jays are back out in front. It's now 3-2. Okay, you're right where you want to be. Top of the fifth inning comes up. Nick Castellanos, once again, not a very hard hit ball, but a grounder up the middle finds a way through. And Garrett Stubbs comes in to score. We're tied to three now. It's going back and forth, back and forth in this ball game. We go to the bottom of the sixth inning. The Blue Jays threatening. Lourdes Gurriel Jr. rips the ball to left field. And it bounces. And it could not have been any closer to not going over the wall. But going over the wall, it does. Kirk comes in to score on the RBI double from Gurriel. If it doesn't go over the wall, it's two runs. And the Jays would be up 5-3. But instead, it goes over. And it's a 4-3 ball game. And if you watch the replay, ball bounces, goes up, and it hits the top of the fence and just goes over. I'm like, it's just the Jays' luck lately. Like, they've scored some runs on these little, little choppers and little ground balls up the middle. Meanwhile, we get a double rip to the gap. Looks like it's scoring to score two. And it just dink, dink, off the top of the wall. No ground rule double. Kirk to third, or sorry, I think it was Tasker Hernandez goes back to third. We end up getting the bases loaded here. With less than no less than two out. We all know lately that's been a disaster. And it was. You don't get anything out of it. But you're still at 4-3. But there's that glaring, we had a massive opportunity to, to, to blow this game wide open, staring you right in the face. But the bullpen locks it down after that. Tim Meza, phenomenal. Garcia, phenomenal. Romano, phenomenal. Nobody allows a hit in all three innings. The problem with the Jays' bullpen we talked about is the swing and miss. And it showed tonight, right? Meza didn't get a strikeout. Garcia didn't get a strikeout. Romano got 1K. But that's not good enough. You know, 1K over three innings for 
your high leverage bullpen guys. It's just not what you want to see. But you'll take the win and you'll move on, right? In the game of baseball, is 162. And right now we're just trying to crawl to the all-star break to stay afloat by the all-star break. Now, offensively, the Jays were on fire. Obviously, they only had four runs in the game on 14 hits. It just tells you they couldn't get that, that, that kind of knockout punch in this game. But that's been, the, that's been the theme lately. However, it starts with the way they did it today. Alejandro Kirk went two for four in the game, scored a run. Teoscar Hernandez went two for four in the game. He's, he had two RBIs, obviously, in that first inning. And then Lourdes Gurriel Jr., I mentioned earlier, didn't get out in the ball game. He went four for four. With a run scored and an RBI. A perfect night in the office for Gurriel. He's batting over 300 now on the season. His numbers are looking mighty, 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 mighty good right now. I mean, I'd love to see the pop, the, the home run power come back for Gurriel a bit. But you know what? He's finding ways to get, to get on base. And when you're getting that from your like 6-7 hitter, I will take that any day of the week, right? 14 hits total for the Toronto Blue Jays, nine strikeouts in the game, and let's get to Jose Barrios, because he was the guy, look, you come out, you come home, we still don't know the status on Kevin Gosman, you just lost four in a row in Seattle, and, there's, and you had the off day to kind of reset you, and he was phenomenal. I know people are going to say, well, he went six innings, allowed three runs in, in six hits, that's not great. If you watch the hits he allowed, other than the solo bomb to Scott, yeah, there were some hard hit balls, whatnot, but then look, look, look at the two RBIs, right? The Castellanos RBI single and the Odubel Herrera RBI, uh, in, I guess, infield single that he had. You know, he, those, those, I'm not, I'm not even, I'm not going to buy that. So I look at his line as six innings, 13 strikeouts, and does not walk a batter. If you watch the ball game, the fact, the way that he was attacking hitters with his, with his curveball was nasty. So much movement on it today. His fastball up, it was dealing. D dropping at 95 quite often in the game. Get a lot of swing and miss on the elevated fastball. And elevated and out of the strike zone, right? It's, it, it, there's a difference between elevated and just out of the strike zone or just inside the strike zone where he was locating today. Or fastball in, like you know, middle, middle, or middle in, or middle up and not up enough. Let's get crushed. And he was dialed in tonight, and it helps that he had his changeup as well. Got quite a few swing and miss on that. That, all, that His changeup had a lot of bite in this game. 13 Ks over six innings, doesn't walk a batter. He does exactly what the, J, what the Jays needed him to do. Go solid, go long innings. He went six. I would have loved to see him go more, but I think it was like 95 pitches through six. So I, I get it. And you had the lead as well. So turn it over to these guys after the day off. Tim Mays, like I said, he was great. Went did a clean inning, no hits, no walks, no runs, no case. Just a clean job from Tim Mesa. Jimmy Garcia was great again. He went a clean inning, no hits, no walks, no runs, no case. And Jordan Romano, obviously had a guy at first base, but nothing else doing for him. He uh, went one inning, got a strikeout, and that's all she wrote. He picks up his 19th save on the season. Bur Burrios picked up his seventh win on the year, even though wins and losses don't mean squat uh, anymore. It's not like you need a 20-game winner. It means really nothing anymore. And the Blue Jays win a ball game. And I think that's the most important part, right? They won a ball game on home field. They felt good about themselves. Barrios gave you a good start. You had some red hot hitters. You had 14 hits in the ball game. Your bullpen was good. And you got to win against a team that is, you know, what, four or five games over 500, kind of where you're sitting right now. Great job from the boys today. Now, the finale, though. Game two of the mini two game set against the Philadelphia Phillies goes tomorrow night. It's a 7.07 first pitch at Rogers Center. And this pitching matchup is a doozy, right? Ross Stripling has been phenomenal for the Blue Jays this season. He's really revitalized himself. And I think it's important. Like, we always talk about Ross Stripling being that hybrid guy. You know, he can do this, he can do that, he can do this, he can do that. But let's be honest. If you know every five days you're going out there and you're starting a ball game, and you know that for a fact, right? You can go to bed one night thinking, am I starting tomorrow? No, I'm not. Okay, let's just get my, off, uh, my, my workout in, whatever the case may be. And then he knows on that fifth day he's going to go out there and he's going to be ready to start. You know, like a week in advance, pretty much, you know, obviously situations, you know, could change. But you have an idea of who you're going up against. And Ross Stripling, he's looked comfortable in the rotation. But he's going to be countered by Zach Wheeler. And if you look at the numbers, Zach Wheeler is having a fan fantastic season. I was going to go phenomenal, and they came out phenomenal. So you guys can get the gist of that. But both pitchers have been great this season. It's going to be a really big pitcher's duel tomorrow. What we need tomorrow for the Blue Jays, get some clutch knocks. 
You get a guy on, in scoring position with two out, drive him in. You get a guy on second and third, less than two out, get him in somehow. Whether it's a sack fly, you need to be able to scratch and claw runs against Zach Wheeler. You're not going to be going out there like you did today and ripping three doubles and getting the bases loaded and getting multi guys. You're not going to get that very often tomorrow. So you've got to make do with your opportunities. And we'll see how it goes. You go out there and you win that ball game tomorrow. You're making a statement here. You just came home and won both against a Phillies team who is not too shabby at all. And um, well, we all know this team st still needs work, but it's going to be very intriguing. And we all thought playoffs were you know by the wayside. But if you win tomorrow, you would have won two straight, swept the mini two game, probably bring out the mini broom, and the positive vibes will be back. Whether it continues or not, you got, if you play well heading into the All-Star break, it just leaves a different vibe with the team. However, I got a question, Charlie, I want to tell you one thing. Now, I don't know if it was Charlie. I don't know if it was, you know, John Schneider's obviously on the phone trying to figure out if they should challenge or not. I don't know who saw that Vladdy shouldn't, was not on first base, or was on first base, that, that they should they, they should have challenged that play. Because Vladdy at first base is like, I'm not on the base. Don't challenge it. And they're like, yeah, we'll challenge it. He's like, you're an idiot. And then the call up was upheld. He was safe at first base. And he's like, you just wasted your challenge. I told you not to do it. So I don't know who the hell's doing that, but just lost. All right, Chase fans. So you know what that is going to do it for this one. If you enjoyed the video and you enjoyed the ball game tonight, because hey, it's a win. You'll enjoy it. All right. Smack the like button. Do appreciate that. Hit the subscribe button. You guys not already comment down below. Thoughts on the video. Thoughts on the game. Would you like? Would you not like? From today's game for the Toronto Blue Jays. The Twitter link is down below. So follow up. Send me a DM to that great stuff. The Instagram link is also down below. So follow up there if you guys have not done so already. And hey, we'll keep the we'll keep this hat on as long as possible. Maybe it'll work wonders like the Jose Bautista jersey did last season, where I put this thing on and it was just a way to the races that home stretch. Who knows? This might be the new thing. We'll have to wait and see though, Jays fans. Tomorrow, game two of the two game series against the uh, Philadelphia Phillies. Out Rogers Center, 707 first pitch there. Ross Stripling, Zach Wheeler is the pitching matchup, all right? So thank you guys so much for listening and watching. I hope you enjoyed the video and the ball game tonight. We'll talk to you guys then.